From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello, all you Ropecast listeners. This is Roger, the first half of Rope, but Peter is not with me today. Instead, I have a studio guest. Hello, John. Hello, Roger. Nice to have you here. Mm-hmm. Thank you. The other day when I was talking with Peter, we were dealing with sports, mm-hmm. and the idea came to me that we have lots of phrases in English that actually derive from different types of sport. Yes. For example, since I'm English, I think of cricket, our mm-hmm. summer national game. Mm-hmm. Would you know what I mean if I said, it's not cricket? Um, not necessarily. I mean, our national game is baseball, and we have a lot of expressions, but it's not cricket. What is that? Is it an insect? <laughs> no, this does refer to the game. Ah. Yeah. And it means it's not fair. You're not playing by the rules. It's not cricket means you're not playing by the rules. That's interesting because in the States, uh, the United States, we are often s- refer to a situation as not being on a level playing field. I've heard that, yeah. You have heard that. That to us is just when the field is not level, it means that the two teams are not evenly matched, often because the rules are not being followed properly. And that in order to have a fair game, yeah. the playing field must remain level. Right. So what would be worse than that would be if you were batting on a sticky wicket. Wait a moment. Now, wait, now, now this is getting to another level of complexity. A sticky wicket. But now, sticky, of course, is, means it's, it's, it sticks. It's, uh, yeah. What, what does that mean? Well, the wicket is where the batsman stands to receive the ball. Yeah. And a sticky wicket, I suppose, originally really was kind of sticky because it was wet and muddy and difficult to play on. But we use this for all kinds of difficult situations in life. All kinds of difficult situations. I mean, we would probably, my answer to that would be, you just thrown me a curveball. Ah. A curveball. Do you, do you have any idea what that means? That's from baseball? That's also from baseball. It's when you throw the ball in a way that it literally curves, and it's difficult to hit. So it doesn't go in a straight line. But it doesn't go in a straight line. And interestingly enough, when you say it in other terms, to be thrown a curveball means to be given something that you don't understand or it's difficult to comprehend. Do you have anything like that in cricket? Well, I think that would be if you bowled a googly. No, wait a moment. Now, this is really getting (laughs) just A googly? Where does that come from? Is that an internet expression or something? No, no. This is, again, cricket. Oh, right. That's G-O-O-G-L-Y. Yes. And if someone bowls you a googly, they put you in a situation where you really don't know what to do. You're helpless. If you said to be googly a thousand times, I would still think that is the most outrageous thing I've ever heard. But it certainly is a fascinating word. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure baseball is the origin of ballpark figure. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Ballpark figure is, for example, you uh, want to know a rough idea, an estimate of something. You say, give me a ballpark figure on that. And uh, it, it means that you're not giving a precise calculation, but you're asking for something that is an approximate number. But it refers to the ballpark where everyone sits and where the field is located. And we use it all the time, particularly in business terms, yeah. when, when you're looking for a non-precise estimate. Right. And the other one that I've come across in British English as well, but not so often, is rain check. A rain check. A rain check is uh, basically a case where the game is not played at all because of poor weather. Perhaps it's raining and the game is not played. But you're allowed to take the ticket stub uh, later in the season when the game is rescheduled and you can use it then. And that's your rain check. But in real life terms or other life terms, we say, if I can't meet you for lunch today, I'll say, Roger, how about that we take a rain check on that? Right. Fine. Well, thanks for that, John. I'm sure we can go back to this topic another time. I hope so. Well, let's leave it there for today. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial. <laughs>